Happy Monday, everyone. I uh, was getting ready to come over here and do the video for today and the reading for today. And uh, timing is... I just got to thinking about this. Now I'm going to tell you a quick story. I know it'll be as quick as I can. But here's the deal. About... Um, it must be... I don't know, five years ago now, something like that. Um, if you don't, for those of you who don't know, I, I'm a big fight fan. I used to be a bigger fan than I am now, but I still like to watch UFC fights. And uh, about five years ago, whatever it was, we had, uh, the, Wendy and I had plans to bring the kids to Wisconsin Dells. And then after the plans were set and everything, I find out, that was the same weekend as uh, this huge fight. I believe it was the first time Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell fought, if I remember right. The first or second time they fought. Big fight, big anticipated fight. So um, I asked Wendy if she could, we could reschedule the trip to Wisconsin Dells. And her response was what you probably expect it was. And let's just say it was no. So we get to Wisconsin Dells, and I'm searching high and low for somebody that's showing. It was before, this is before Buffalo Wild Wings and them got involved, and they show the fights, you know, pretty much at all their locations. So I'm um, frantically trying to figure out where I can watch a fight. Nobody's got it. I mean, I literally would have went over to somebody, a stranger's house to watch if I had the option, option you know. So, uh... I went down to the, um, what do they call him, the concierge or whatever. I told Wendy, I told him to call her the counselor. I'm going to talk to the counselor. And, uh, but anyway, I went down and she couldn't find anywhere for me to watch a fight. So I contact a few buddies of mine that watch the fights with me all the time, or we watch the fights. Said, so don't call me, don't text me, nothing. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know. I don't want to know if it's a good fight, a bad fight, a boring fight. I don't know. I don't want to know anything. Nothing, because we were going to be back Sunday, and I was going to rent it for myself the day after. So it's like I'm watching it live, right? And the cool thing was, it just that happened to be Super Bowl Sunday. So I'm sitting there. I got the big TV with the fights. I got another little TV right next to it with the Super Bowl on. And because um, we got back in town right about Super Bowl time. So I got them both going on, right? And it's like I was watching the fight live. It already happened, but, it, you know, I didn't know anything about it, so I'm watching it live. And I got to thinking about that, how if you are born again, you know the rest of the story. You don't have to wonder what's going to happen. He has already told us how the game ends. And the game ends like the Super Bowl yesterday ended. The Saints win. That's how it ends. You realize that? And the same God that set, tells us that the Saints win. And by the way, a saint is a born-again Christian. It's not some elevated status you reach in some religion. If you are born again and you have surrendered to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a saint. At the end of the game, the saints win. And the same God that we serve, let's just take a look at what he does. Let's see if he is qualified to tell us how it's going to end. I'm going to Isaiah 40, verse 12. What does he do? Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and met it out? I, think, I don't know. It stands for marked off. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And marked out, marked off heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth and measure. He measures the dust of the earth and weighed the mountains in scales and hills in a balance. This God that we serve, that told us 
that has already told us how the game is going to end. He measured some mountains on scales. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, our being his counselor, has taught him. This is, you know, in Isaiah it's saying, who has done that? Who has directed him? Nobody. He has done this, right? With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop, as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he takes up the isles as a very little thing. This is nothing for him to orchestrate things. And this same God that we serve, what does he tell us about those that hope in him and are waiting on him? And man, the timing of this to get to Isaiah 40 for me is was just perfect. And of course, his timing is perfect. And even though he measures... What does it say? What does he measure? I get a great memory, don't I? Measures and weighs the mountains and the, on the scales. Even though he does that, he thinks of us enough to be involved in every little bit of our life when we belong to him. And what does he say to us that hope in him and are waiting on him? He says in verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Who, who is that? Those that are waiting upon the Lord. Peace. See ya.